Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is my 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and today I'll be showing you how to replace the fluid in the rear differential. The procedure shown in this video is fairly common and will apply to many other popular vehicles. This Dana 44A rear axle can be found in vehicles made by Dodge, Ford, GM, Nissan, Corvette, Mitsubishi, Pontiac, Jaguar, and International. So even if your axle isn't a Dana 44A, the general process shown in this video will help you understand how to change the fluid in many similar axles. Here's an image I made to help you identify which axles you have. The last time I replaced the fluid in this differential was only 15,000 miles ago, but it took me 5 years to get there because I don't drive the Jeep very often. However, those were some pretty hard miles, so I have a feeling the oil is not going to look very good. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Breaker bar, torque wrench, socket wrench, half inch socket, socket extension, flathead screwdriver, really old plastic mallet, magnetic bowl, coarse steel wool, razor blade, scissors, an angled pick, rubber gloves, oil drain pan, and a creeper. For this job, I also needed two quarts of 85W140 conventional gear oil, two cans of brake cleaner, one tube of gasket maker, and some kitty litter to soak up the mess I made in the driveway. To get started, you may need to jack up your vehicle a few inches and rest it on jack stands. My Jeep has a 3.5 inch lift, so I didn't have any clearance issues. First, I'll remove the bolts that secure the differential cover. I needed a breaker bar to break loose most of them. My rear skid plate leaves very little clearance for the upper bolts, but I was still able to reach them with a standard length socket. I used a socket extension just to make removing most of the bolts a little bit easier. You should loosen the top center bolt but leave it in place so that the cover doesn't fall off when you break the seal. Some differentials have steel tags that are held on by these bolts. The tags are used to identify gear ratios, carrier types, and other information about your differential. Make sure you have a drain pan in place before you remove the differential cover. If your diff cover has a normal gasket, it should come off pretty easily. If it is held together with sealant, like mine, it will take a little more effort to break loose. I used a flathead screwdriver and a plastic mallet to separate the cover, but you must be very careful not to scratch the mating surfaces. You may have noticed I forgot to leave one bolt in at the top. A stupid mistake, but hopefully someone can learn from it. Fortunately, kitty litter does a pretty good job at soaking up oil and making it easier to clean up. It's easier to pull the fill plug before removing the differential cover, but of course I forgot to do that too. You can still do it later. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. With the plug removed, I cleaned off most of the oil using brake cleaner in a well-ventilated area. It's not easy to see in the video, but this fluid looked very dirty. In the future, I will plan to replace it every 2-3 to three years or 10,000 miles instead. If you only drive on the highway, your differential fluid could last up to 50,000 miles. Removing all of the old gasket sealant is the most tedious step. Consider yourself lucky if you don't have to do this. 
After pulling away the loose material by hand, grab a razor blade and carefully scrape the mating surface as clean as possible. This took me about 15 minutes. I also used an angled pick to help clean out some of the bolt holes. With most of the gasket material removed, I sprayed the cover with brake cleaner once again. I used steel wool to remove the rest of the gasket material. Then I sprayed it with brake cleaner one last time and wiped it clean with a paper towel. Before I cleaned it up, I thought the rubber fill plug was due to be replaced. Now it looks good as new. If you do need a new fill plug, check for a link in the description below. You can also clean out your differential housing with brake cleaner, but it's probably only necessary when the fluid looks especially dirty or hasn't been replaced in a long time like mine. When all that nasty stuff is done draining out of the differential housing, we can clean and prepare the mating surface the same way we did with the differential cover. One final blast of brake cleaner to help wash away any little bits of debris. Brake cleaner evaporates pretty quickly. I waited about 20 or 30 minutes to make sure it was completely gone. This is the perfect time to prep the differential cover for installation. If you're using another brand of gasket maker, the directions might be a little different, so make sure you read them and understand them. I use this brand of gasket maker because it only has a 90 minute drying time. It seems to seal really well and I've never had any problems with it. First, we'll make sure the surfaces are clean and dry. Cut the nozzle to one of the smaller diameters and apply a continuous bead of silicone to one surface.
I found it was too difficult to squeeze through the smallest hole, but I'm sure it would have come out easier if I had warmed it up a little first. The instructions say to surround all the bolt holes with sealant. If you want to get more than one use out of this tube, make sure to replace the cap right away. But even if you do, it tends not to last more than a couple of months on the shelf after opening. My bead wasn't perfect, so I used my finger to even it out. I sprayed a little brake cleaner on a paper towel to remove the last few drops of oil from the differential mating surface and gave it a moment to evaporate. The directions say to assemble parts immediately while the silicone is still wet and finger tighten the bolts until material begins to squeeze out from around the flange. I started reassembly by putting a bolt in the top center hole to line up the cover and hang it while I install the other bolts. Be very careful not to mess up the silicone, or you could make a lot more work for yourself. Don't forget to install your diff ID tags. With all the bolts just finger tight, it's not a bad idea to put some tape over the fill hole while you let the seal dry for an hour to keep any dust or bugs from getting in. After one hour has passed, it's time to tighten the bolts to the correct torque specifications. This can vary depending on what axle you have, but if you don't have a torque wrench, just make sure the bolts are snug. They don't have to be really tight. The torque spec for these bolts on my Dana 44A is 30 foot-pounds, but I've read that old bolts on these axles break easily, so a lot of people only tighten them to 25 foot-pounds, which is what I did. Tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern to distribute the pressure evenly. After an additional 30 minutes, the differential is ready to be filled with fluids and returned to service. The service manual for this differential calls for 2 quarts of 75W140 gear oil with friction modifier. If the oil you get doesn't have friction modifier blended in, you can buy it separately. And if you don't have a limited slip differential, then you don't need the friction modifier. This Dana 44A with limited slip calls for an additional 4 ounces of friction modifier. However, at 201,000 miles, the limited slip clutches inside of this differential have long burned out and no longer work. So I'm not adding any friction modifier this time. I might still need to add some later on if it starts making noise or creating vibrations. I chose to go with a slightly heavier 85 weight 140 gear oil for two reasons. One, it doesn't have the friction modifier blended in. And two, I do a lot of slow driving off-road with a lot of weight in the Jeep, and I believe a heavier oil will provide a little extra protection under those conditions. And this wasn't my idea either. Many Jeep owners suggest this oil for the Dana 44A. You may need a fluid pump to get all the gear oil into the differential because of clearance issues, but I was able to bend the bottles just enough to get it all in. 
Once you've put in the correct amount of fresh fluid, pop the fill plug back in, clean up your mess, and we're done. That concludes this week's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, just keep throwing money at it. Recycle your used automotive fluids! All right. Well now, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while, hasn't it? Hey everyone. 